Okay, the purpose of this video is just to respond to a comment that was put on a, a video that I posted a couple of days ago. I, I posted a video of a whole lot of SS daggers that I'm putting in a in a big shadow box. And um, and by the way, thank you very much for those people who lobbed in the suggestions about how I might go about doing that, suggestions for hanging, that sort of thing. I do appreciate it. There's some really good ideas that I will follow up on. But it was a comment posted this morning which kind of got my attention. And it was somebody who said, well, great lineup of daggers, but it's it's almost certain that there's a couple of fakes in there. And initially when I, when I read that I just, I just bridled and thought, oh for Christ's sake, it's just some wanker being being negative. But I don't think he was actually. I think he, he had a good point. So what I'm doing is I'll, I'll answer specifically why I'm confident the stuff that I've got is the good stuff. And I'm confident about that because I followed some protocols. And I think that these if we can call them protocols, rules if you like, that I think if, if people follow in their uh, area of collecting whatever it is, will go a long way to protecting you from the fakes and the fraudsters. Firstly, there is a colossal amount of fake stuff out there, and specific to SS, probably three quarters of the stuff that you see is reproduction, fake, something that's been reconstituted from parts, same with the Falschenjäger gear. It commands such high prices, it's incentivized people to, um, to fake, to reproduce, to, to try and pull the wool over people's eyes. So the guy's got a good point, and I just want to run through the things that you can do and should do in order to protect yourself. Now firstly, stay off eBay. If you're looking at, at items that are more than a couple of hundred bucks, then you've got to be very, very sceptical and very, very cautious. There's a tremendous amount of schlock on eBay. A lot of it was initially manufactured as reproduction. It was never intended to be passed off as original. But over time, with a bit of weathering and a bit of judicious application of one thing or another, it can be made to look very, very convincing and trap the unwary. And that applies even more to iOffer, which is, a, I believe, a European um, auction site. There's a lot of stuff on that one from Eastern Europe and you have to be extremely cautious about anything that comes out of Eastern Europe. The Baltic states, Czechoslovakia or Russia, um, there's a very sophisticated group of fraudsters there that have been working for some considerable period of time. They have access to stuff that, particularly Czechoslovakia, stuff that was used post-war by the Czechoslovakian army that they'd taken as war surplus from the Germans. It's been reconstituted war insignia or copies have been applied, re-stitched onto the uniforms and they're being sold off as original. Paratroop helmets, the Czechs use the same pattern and with a bit of judicious weathering they can be made to look uh, very very convincing indeed. I've actually got a fake one, I got burned a couple of years ago. So be very cautious about those sites. If it's a, an item that's only worth you know, a couple of hundred bucks you're probably going to be okay because there's not really that much of an incentive for people to have faked it, but just be aware there will be people passing off what they know to be reproduction as the real McCoy and the minute you push, push the purchase button and then push the send button from your bank account or iPay or whatever the hell it is, uh, you've done your dough. Big boys games, big boys rules, you just have to, just have to suck up the loss. With the daggers I have a protocol, which I'll talk about now, that you can apply to anything. I tend to deal with the big dealers, the big names in, in the business. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, it, it's generally the big boys that have the big toys. The high-end, expensive items, generally in the hands of people like Bill Shea from Rupture Duck, Tom Whitman, Tom Johnson, Jason Burmeister, um, Steve Wolf. Um, if you're in this dagger game, you'll know that these are the big boys in the field. The fact that they are big boys is um, one of the reasons I buy from them. Like anything in, in business, you don't get to be a big business unless you do what you do well. If you're not producing something smarter, better, more innovative, cheaper than the next guy, then you will cease to be a big business very quickly indeed. Just have a look at Nokia. With the dealers that have the, the big reputations, um, they've worked bloody hard to get those, and I'm a capitalist, I do not resent the fact that they make money. There is some in the, in the hobby that seem to be quite resentful and have the opinion that 
the big boys collude with one another to keep the prices high, or that they load up a massive dealer's premium if they're selling on consignment or if they're purchasing and then selling that there's a big a big premium on top of the of the price and that keeps the price up. I don't necessarily agree with that, but even if it were true, as I say, I don't begrudge them their money. They have been a business, some of them, for 30 years, and they've it takes a, a long time to craft a reputation, to gain the professional knowledge that they have, and basically what I'm paying them for is that professional knowledge. I've come to this hobby, the, the dagger collecting, quite late in the piece. I will never get to a point where I've got sufficient knowledge myself to be confident that I can make a determination between a real thing and a fake, because the fakes are done so well. Particularly with etchings, uh, I showed you some inscription daggers, the Chinese are now using computer assisted design etching. And if they've got access to the real deal, they can copy that so well that you almost have to be CSI forensic to be able to make a determination as to which one is real and which is a copy. So I don't have a problem with the big boy dealers. I pay for the expertise. In New Zealand we just don't have the number of shows nor the number of military items to hand for me to be able to go around and actually have the things in hand with somebody that knows what they're talking about teaching me about what to look for because the devil's in the details. Obviously there's, there's reference books like Tom Whitman's books they're fantastic but they only go so far. You need to have the real deal in front of you and as important you need to have that perhaps next to a fake item so that you begin to learn what to look for uh, and, and make a determination about what's real and what's not. I'm never going to have that opportunity in New Zealand. We just do not have the volume uh, or the opportunity to, to get that kind of knowledge. So I am paying a premium to some of the big dealers with very good reputations. They've done the homework for me. They've done the hard yards in making a determination and that's what I'm paying them for. The other thing that I, I suggest you do, and this is Again, it's not specific just to daggers, but if you join the forums, there, there are some excellent online World War II forums. I'm a member of two. One is called Wehrmacht Awards Forum, and the other is called War Relics. One Wehrmacht Awards Forum tends to be populated perhaps a little bit more by Americans. War Relics tends to be a little bit more European, but there's a, there's a great deal of cross-fertilization. A lot of guys are members of both. The forums offer you a number, of, a number of benefits. Firstly, you learn a lot, but more importantly, they are populated by some of the most expert people on the planet. A lot of the moderators who run their respective threads or specialist topics are the guys that write the reference books. They are encyclopedic in knowledge. And along with them, there are guys who are amateur, you know, inspired amateur enthusiasts who spent their entire lives studying whatever niche we're talking about, they've got tremendous expertise. What you should do if you're contemplating making a purchase and spending a bit of money, you should get good quality photos from the dealer, from the dealer's website, and post them to the forums. You will have hundreds of pairs of eyes on the things, and the people that are looking at the stuff that you're contemplating buying are people that can spot a fake at 50 meters. They've got that kind of knowledge. So it's an extremely good filter. Um, even if you if you trust the dealers that you're you know you, you, that you've been dealing with, even them, uh, I still take the items and I post them to the forums because the dealers themselves are not infallible. From time to time, they get it wrong. So the forums are a great filter. It's also a, a place where you can buy and sell. A lot of people sell good stuff on the on the forum for sale section. Uh, there isn't a dealer premium involved, and the fact that they've put it up with photographs it's almost a guarantee that it's going to be okay because as I say it's going to have a hell of a lot of people that know what they're talking about casting their beady little eyes upon the pieces and if there's a question mark that'll come up very quickly indeed so deal with the good dealers and again with the forums if you go into any of the, either of those sites you will learn very quickly who the good guys are and who the rat bags are quite often there are threads detailing dealers to deal with, dealers to stay away from. You will learn very fast who are the dodgy bastards. So um, <clears throat> with the daggers I, I've purchased from the big names. Um, it's in their interests uh, 
uh, their professional interest to make sure they're not trying to pull the wool over my eyes. I always tell them that I will post pictures of your item for verification on the forums before I commit to a purchase. If ever any one of them came back and said, no, I don't want you to do that, well, that would be a purchase that wasn't going to happen because obviously there's some issue with the piece. The dealers, the big dealers also generally have pretty good money back guarantees or return policy. If there's a question mark, you'll get your money back or at the very least you'll get a credit. Most of the good ones offer unconditional money back. You've got an inspection period, you're not happy, return it and um, they'll refund you. There are a mixed bag. There, there are some big dealers who have in the past done some questionable things. I don't want to name them, but go on the forums and you'll learn who they are pretty bloody quickly. So, stick with the well-known dealers, stay off eBay, buy the item, not the story. If you can't, if you haven't got the ability to develop sufficient expertise in your own right, then use other people's brains. Go to the forums and get things vetted. You can purchase off forums. Um, there's some really good stuff out there that's going to save you a bit of money rather than going through the big dealers or the dealers full stop. Be extremely cautious of anything coming out of Eastern Europe. Be extremely sceptical about things that are on iOffer and eBay unless they're, you know, it's the rats and mice stuff. And also, when you purchase either from an individual or a dealer, tell them that, that you're going to go through this process of posting to the forums. And if there is blowback, if the item comes back as being dodgy, Screen their names from the rooftops and let people know. The word will get around very, very quickly. I think that's probably, I don't want to keep this video, I want to keep it short. I, I think that that's probably the best advice that I can give you. The guy that called one of these things must be fake on my SS daggers, he mentioned the word provenance. One of the things which gives me great comfort is that given that these items are high end, I mean they're, you know, they're, they're tens of thousands and in one case over $100,000 items, they're very well known. They've been around for 70 years now. They've been in people's collections who are well known. And every time I've posted pictures to the forums, I've always got people coming back and saying, I saw that dagger in 1963. I saw that dagger in 1975. It used to be owned by. So the high-end stuff, you know, it's, it's fairly well known in its own right. People recognize it. And very oftentimes, it's in the literature, photographs in Tom Whitman's books. Um, quite a few of these items are actually photographed in these books. So on that basis, and given the protocols that I followed, I'm very confident the stuff I've got is not dodgy. But then I'm not infallible. Um, and um, you, you just, you go as far as you can to establish provenance and authenticity. And at the end of the day, you put your big boy pants on, and if you've got it wrong, you take the punch. Hopefully, you've got a relationship with the dealer where you can you can get your money back. But big boys games, big boys rules. Um, okay, uh, there's one one outfit I will mention in the negative, uh, just to, because they really piss me off. A couple of years ago, I bought a Japanese helmet with a cover. It arrived in New Zealand. I took one look at it and went, "Oh my God, it's crap." It wasn't evident in the photographs was from an outfit called Granny Attic in the UK. So I emailed them and said, I've got a real problem with this, I want my money back. And they said, certainly we'll look into it, we need to do some research. They're always looking into it and they've stopped communicating. So I've done my dough, it was a couple of thousand bucks, I've done my dough. But uh, Granny Attic, karma is a bitch. There'll be a few people watching this video. If you are contemplating buying from Granny Attic, don't. They're a bunch of four-star, high-octane, Thundercuts. Hope you're all well. Talk to you soon.